we have already looked at the war's storyline leading up to 2391 and the events in the trading card game and the RPG. We've also taken a look at the trading card game itself with Incursion from 2004 and Nowhere to Hide from 2005. We've also taken a look at the role-playing game, focusing on the core starter rulebook, the Battlefront supplement, and of course the Incursion adventure in paperback in this particular case. One of the things you may have seen when pulling out your rule book for Nowhere to Hide, the second card set, will be that before you even got to the rules, you ran into a section called When the Mind and Body Become One. Those weren't rules. Those were pages of short fiction. <laughs> short and tiny fiction in this case. You see, what happened was that when Wars was being developed, they decided to bring in, that is Decipher, decided to bring in established fiction authors and other science fiction writers to come in and develop this universe even more than it already was. If you're a player of the games, then there's a lot of information for the universe just packed into the cards. You check out the top, it's got the card lore. Lots of information there for you. And some of the cards reference each other. It creates a hint of a universe. It doesn't really elaborate too much on it. Then, you had, of course, the role-playing game, things like Battlefront, where what you had in here was more detailed information about the universe, the technology, how things are supposed to work, how the factions work, lots of information about how you get from, well, present-day Earth, for us, up to the year 2391, where we have the events of the games happening, the trading card game and the RPG. However, that's mostly just backstory. That'd be like wanting to experience something about the Civil War, and just reading a bunch of books about the armaments of the Civil War and how the Civil War started, it's not really going to give you a sense of what it was like to actually be there. For that, you need a storyteller. And while there are many great fans of wars who made some great scenarios as they were playing the RPG, those aren't official, those are fan creations. That's game masters doing what they're supposed to do and creating good adventures for their players. So, these fiction writers created the very first body of prose fiction for the Wars universe. And it was all made available for free on the Decipher website for the Wars trading card game. And they're actually pretty good, but bear in mind that when I say short stories, I mean short, very short. Together, they might be able to comprise one anthology in the sense of what you'd like to see in a bookstore with something like, if you want to take a Star Wars example, Tales from the Mos Eisley Cantina, Tales from Jabba's Palace. And that's essentially the same vein they're written in. These, for the most part, aren't written as series. Instead, it's a bunch of short stories focusing on different characters, different factions, with the goal of fleshing out this universe, giving you a real sense of who these characters are, in some cases, and what this universe is all about. Some of them are really quite good. The authors brought in include, you'll excuse me for looking at some notes because I have some pronunciation trouble here myself, Mark Tuttle, Chuck Kallenbach II, Kyle Hewer, if I'm pronouncing that correct, Tim Ellington, Michael O'Brien, Erica Stensfag, and Michael A. Stackpole, known from the Star Wars novels, among other things. And what you wound up with was about 20 different prose stories. Some of them focused on Earthers, some on Mavericks. And most of them were Earther or Maverick stories, for the most part. The Earthers got about seven, the Mavericks got about eight. Granted, some of these focus on more than one faction, but if you were to break it down, and give the ones that are shared a vote for either faction, usually about you know seven to eight each for Earthers and Mavericks. You only got about three stories that focused on the Ganjin, and for the most part, they shared screen time, if that's what you want to call it, with the Earthers or with the Mavericks. I guess it was more the Mavericks than the Earthers. And you only really had a couple focusing on the Shi and about three focusing on the Quay. So the alien factions really didn't get a whole lot of play when it came to these early short stories. But you wound up with several by Tuttle, you wound up with about six by Michael Stack, pulled out six by Kallenbach, and together they formed a nice sort of backbone of fiction to work within this already fictional universe that had been fleshed out from the standpoint of card lore and the standpoint of RPG materials, but hadn't quite gotten the chance to really have prose fiction written until those moments. Now, as I said, they don't really focus on any one particular character, but there were some that stood out very prominently. Among them, you had stories, particularly in Michael Stackpole's particular stories, where he was looking at a combination of Mavericks and Gonjin. You had Kuj uh, Kujiko Toraco, excuse me, 
almost hiccup there, Kujiko Toraco, you may remember from one of the starter decks, and Starhawk, one of the Mavericks. So game characters playing lead roles in the short fiction, again, to flesh out the characters and their universe. You also had a few times where Sherry Akorig showed up. In fact, she showed up more times than I expected as I was reading these all for the first time, reading the entire library. She winds up being one of those characters that pops up a few times. You really got to make sure you're paying attention to see her. You also had characters who sort of provide the sneakier backbone behind the, the machinations behind the scenes. Characters like John and Wraith. So you wind up with seeing these characters showing up in these short stories, and it's meant to flesh things out. But it ended. When the series ended, the fiction ended. In fact, the fiction, I think, ended a little bit before the series did. It's a great little library, about an anthology's worth of material, but that was all that was ever produced. Everything else was happening within the imaginations of the gamers playing the trading card game or the role-playing game. Now comes Grail Quest Books. What's happening now is that Grail Quest Books has picked one of these major moments in war's history, and that is the Battle of Phobos, which takes place in 2388, late 2388, approximately three years prior to the Mumon Rift that leads into the card games. So we're talking about three years prior. Okay, that's 2391. This is 2388. With no Rift, that means no She, no Quay. What you have is human factions at each other's throats, basically. You have the Earthers, Gonjin, or Mars, as the Earthers would call them, because they would never acknowledge them as Gonjin. That's the name they assumed for themselves when they unrightfully declared independence, mind you. I'm an Earther author, what can I say? And we've got the Mavericks, the different gangs. They're not really coordinating as much in this particular time period. It is a solar system gone mad with human power grabs. And as we lead up to the Battle of Phobos in a nine novella series, we have three novellas from the Earthers, three novellas for Gonjin, three novellas for the Mavericks. Now, I can't tell you too much about books two or three of any of those quasi-trilogies, okay? What I can tell you is a little bit about the first books in each. In the first Gonjin novel, written by Sean E. Williams, you're going to find Haijin Orochito dealing with Socho. That, of course, is the artificial intelligence that pretty much runs Gonjin, and we're leading up to what happens at the Battle of Phobos? The Nobots. We're leading up to some pretty serious stuff happening on Gonjin, all thanks to the machinations of people like Haijin. Now, his involvement? You're going to have to read to find that out as we go on through the Gonjin novella series. Here's our biggest focus for that one. In the Mavericks novella, at least the first one, written by Jim Perry, or Indiana Jim, Jim Perry, we have, as previously revealed in the working cover that was posted on the Grill Quest Books website, we have several familiar faces, including, in no particular order, Killer Kate Grimalkin. You may remember from one of those many foil cards, Killer Kate will be taking part in the story. Chindon Relk, who I really always found a very intriguing character. Chindon Relk will be taking part in that adventure. And the man whose past just will not leave him alone, which serves as the focal point for the first Mavericks novella, we have the one and only Jack Wilgris, who also, by the way, did appear, as you may recall, in the Incursion role-playing game adventure. Jack Wilgris is the focal point of this sort of Western or Deadwood in space type of story as told by Jim Perry. By the way, to give you a sense of continuity here, Shawnee Williams, the guy who's writing the first Gaja novella, he's also writing the first three issues of the comics, the first three issue story arc, currently tentatively entitled Battlefront, but we'll just say it's the first arc of the comics for right now. As for the first book to be hit in the presses, that's the first Earther novella, and that one is mine. That one I can tell you a little bit more about. It has a slightly bigger cast of characters from a core standpoint, as, again, revealed in previous press releases or revealed on the Grail Press Books website through that original tentative cover. So I'm not giving away anything that is already known, or I'm not giving, any, I'm not giving away anything that is not already known. Excuse me. Slip of the tongue there. And... What you'll find, among other characters, again, in no particular order in that particular story, are characters like the Maverick, Joker Danico, 
whom you may recall. She's kind of a nasty-looking character there. Wouldn't want to meet her in the rat's nest if she's ticked off and has been drinking just a little bit. Jostle Swin, who previously appeared in one of those short stories entitled Anticipation. Jostle Swin will be playing a role in the story. We have the captain of the Shadow Surfer, Rogan Hallard, working for Z-Labs. We have another of the Mavericks, Pepper Tokarates, also seen in the short story Claim Jumper. We'll have the Shadow Surfer, of course, which is Rogan Hallard's ship, as I mentioned before. We have Rogan Hallard's right-hand man, the Ranger Watchman, Jerlin Cray. We will meet Janet Yens and see how she heads towards the events of the game. You may remember her from the Level 2 Guru card. And what are they trying to get their hands on? Stolen technology dealing with a project to create the shrouds, essentially personal cloaking devices. There's more than that pulled from the game that fit together to create that particular story. But essentially what you get in these stories, at least in the first editions, you might say, of these, of these series, is when it comes to the Earthers, you have a story that's kind of dark in some cases, but you have a story in which they're trying to stop the Shroud from getting out of the appropriate hands. Different groups being sent to recover a piece of stolen technology that gives you a sense of some of the interplay of the different Earther corporations and some of the Mavericks. In the Mavericks novella, we get to see a more personal side of Jack Wilgris, some of his background, and really get some depth on that character and a few others that I can't really give away at this point. As for Gaunjin, we get to see the inner workings of that society as it builds towards being able to fend off the Earthers in the Battle of Phobos, focusing on more than just the one character I showed you, but again, not a whole lot that I can real not a whole lot that I can reveal, excuse me, at this point in time. I'm getting tongue-tied, a little excited here. As for the comic book series, the comic book series actually takes place in the era of the game. Again, it's written by Shawnee Williams, or at least the first story arc is. It is three issues. And it's focusing on the children of the current leader of Ganjin. The current leader, current president of Ganjin, has a son named Shin. And Shin's got a problem. Because Shin has a brother, and that brother has gone rogue. He may even have gone so far as to join the Mavericks. They don't know. But Shin and his bodyguard have to go out there and try to find this youngin' before he can cause more problems for their father. It's really sort of an adventure story set in space and something that really fits very well with the idea of doing visual storytelling through a comic book as opposed to prose fiction. So, if this intrigues you at all, and I hope that it does, it's a really cool era in Wars, and I think Wars is a pretty cool universe in and of itself, then go over to grailquestbooks.com. Eventually, as we get to the point of the second and third novellas or any further comic books, then we'll let you know what's coming, let you know what you can pick up through grailquestbooks.com. Don't worry, though about the idea that, well, wait a second, if I really prefer one faction over another, do I want to read all of them? Do I want to read one? Do I want to read two? What about the comics? It's, it's, a, it's one arc. Are there more? What am I going to do? Don't think about it that way. The approach that we are taking is the idea essentially of small story arcs that build into what you might call maxi arcs. We're talking about essentially layered storytelling. So you could pick up one novella, read it, enjoy it, not have to have read the other ones to have it make sense or to enjoy it. The more you read, the more you're going to see the nuances connecting them, the more you're probably going to get out of it. But it's not necessarily going to make it a bad read at all to only read one or two, though I'd certainly recommend reading all nine of them by the time all is said and done. The same thing for the comics. Comics layering storylines as we go along. So, hopefully you're excited for Wars. I know I sure am, but I've certainly got a reason to, as I'm waiting for mine to be published. So hopefully this has been useful to you and getting you excited. Hopefully I've played my role here. And now it's my time to step into the background as the Wars characters themselves take the forefront and take the stage here for us. For Grail Quest Books, this is Nathan Butler. Thank you for watching this Primer series. Good night.